Not all businesses are created equal. The guys that started Airbnb or the guys that started Slack set out to build a multi-billion dollar company that would IPO or get acquired for an insane amount of money. Those are the entrepreneurs that we mostly hear about and that we look up to, and that's totally fine. Who doesn't want to build a business that transforms the world? But the story of how they built their businesses doesn't necessarily apply to everyone. Not all businesses are Amazons. Not all businesses are Facebooks or Twitters. While these companies started in garages and dorm rooms, they were able to raise multiple rounds of venture capital, mostly from Silicon Valley investors, and were able to fuel their exponential growth because they were tackling an insane market opportunity with a new or non-existent and highly innovative approach. The problem we often see is that many small businesses try to follow this exponential growth VC funded approach simply because it's the stuff that we hear about and we assume that that's the way things work and it's not. So I would like to draw a line here between the blockbuster, unicorn, Silicon Valley type of startup and the smaller startup, the company that could become a 10 or 20 or 50 million dollar company but not a 1 billion dollar unicorn. There are different rules for each one of them from fundraising to the type of investors to the way they recruit their teams and finding their co-founders. The terminology is confusing here because they are technically both startups. They're both small businesses, at least at some point, but I'm just gonna call this group the startups and this group the small businesses and get on with the video. So this is starting a small business versus starting a startup. We are dealing with this reality check today because we started Slidebean as this startup kind of company. If you don't know us, we are an AI presentation platform. We built an algorithm that turns this bunch of images and text into this fully designed slide. Back in 2014, we felt the presentation market was up for the taking. We thought that we had what it took to take down PowerPoint, aspiring to those 500 million users that PowerPoint has worldwide. But of course, it wasn't that simple. We saw a lot of similar companies with excellent and smart founders fail at this attempt of becoming the next PowerPoint. We have a cool product and an incredible follower base. Over 400,000 people watch or read our content every month. But we are by no means the company that we set out to build, which can make you feel like you failed as a founder. On the other hand, we've generated millions of dollars in revenue out of a company that three guys, that these three guys started in good old San Jose, Costa Rica. And by a lot of measures, that is a fantastic achievement. The message I'm trying to bring here is we should be more aware of the companies we are starting and understand the paths that we can take to get them to where we want them to be. By the way, a small but influential group of entrepreneurs have started talking about the success stories of these smaller businesses, of these smaller startups in the tech space. To shed some light on these entrepreneurs that don't make the headlines, but have been able to build multi-million dollar companies that employ dozens and sometimes hundreds of people. You should look into the Startup Therapy podcast and the Burmetrics blog. Big fan of both of them. Here are some characteristics that can help you determine the type of business you're creating. Some examples. Are you providing a service that requires humans, meaning employees, on payroll, then you're probably on this side because you will need to scale your staff to scale your revenue. And that usually leads to thinner margins and slower growth. The startup category of business is usually software or tech related. That means that once the software is built, millions of people use it without requiring a proportional amount of employee. If you're replacing an existing manual process with tech, then you might be on your way to the unicorn type of business, but you will need to be aware of how much money can be made with this, which will dictate your business size. Let's talk about fundraising. Investors putting money on the startup kind of business at the early stage expect a 10x return on their investment. That is, if you raise $500,000 at a $5 million valuation, which represents 10% of the company in exchange for those 500K, then they will expect your business to be worth $50 million within five or seven years. It doesn't need to be $50 million in sales, but someone must value it at $50 million, either on a new round of investors or a potential buyer. If that metric is not met, then the investors are not getting the money they expected out of this investment. That's another difference. These investors expect you to sell the business, liquidate assets so that they can get their money back quickly. They'll prefer that to the alternative, which is just collecting a percentage of your dividends over years or even decades. Doing an IPO or initial public offering, which means listing the business on a stock exchange, is another way for investors to get their money. But IPOs are of course reserved mostly for large 
hundred million dollars or more companies. So it's critical that you understand your own business category so that you don't waste time. Time approaching the wrong type of investor. If you're starting, say, a development services company or a growth marketing consulting firm, for example, you should not waste time looking for these startup type investors. Again, I'm using the term startup as I defined it earlier on in the video. In those cases, you probably want an executive type of co-founder that brings the capital and brings a client network and becomes, say, a 50% partner in the company. You are equal partners. You provide the talent and you manage operations and that relationship is totally doable. You may also want to look for friends and family funding. It might be possible to raise, say, $100,000 from people that you know and believe in you, but defining the right business size will set the right expectations as to the risks and potential rewards of their investments. What you definitely don't want is raising a multi-million seed round only to find that you couldn't scale as fast as you expected. On one end, you might have a smaller than expected business that employs a few people and generates some profits and you could continue to operate happily. But on the other hand, you'll have a group of unsatisfied investors pressuring you to grow more. Whatever route you choose, make sure it's something you love doing. You'll be doing it day and night for years and it'll become a significant part of your life and your professional career. Chances are if you succeed, you'll be associated with the company you built pretty much forever in one way or another. All right, so as always, if you wanna take our product for a spin, you may sign up with the link below. The first 25 people to sign up will get a free three month period on the platform. Also, if you become a Slidemy subscriber or maybe you already are one, I have free office hours available for our users. So just ping our team and they'll provide you with access to my calendar. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.